publish this morning. The second Sunday in the month of September. Last week we started a series, Be Filled with the Knowledge of His Will. That was the part one. Today we want to take it further because I want these things to, I want it to sink into our spirits, man. It is an error when we focus on building our outward man, the body, the flesh, to the neglect of the spirit man. Because at the end of the day of everything we have, the one that carries eternal value is the spirit man. It carries eternal value, everlasting value. That's what I mean, not eternal life. It carries eternal value, is the spirit of a human being. So, if you have the life of God, the zoe, the nature of God inside of you, well, good for you because your spirit man is going to transport you to a realm of bliss. A realm of bliss in heaven for a short while and then you come to enjoy the new heaven and the new earth. On the contrary, if your spirit man is not regenerated, not born again, then it's going to take you straight to the lake of fire from hell after a while you'll be promoted. You see, everybody is promoted. First of all, the sinners are promoted from hell fire. From here, the life of suffering doesn't matter the life they live here. Then they are promoted to hell fire. Then after a while, God gives them promotion because there's promotion. Everybody loves promotion. They will be promoted from hellfire to the lake of fire. You can imagine. So, same way Christians will be promoted. They are promoted from heaven to the new heaven and the new earth. The heaven, the abode of God, then they are promoted to the new heaven and the new earth right here. So, you see, we all get promoted. But what determines the kind of promotion you get is what we are looking at. Be filled with the knowledge of His will. Last week, quickly, as a recap, we established the fact that the will of God reveals the mind of God. And also that the will of God is God's gift to us. That is what gives us inheritance. Remember the man we gave example with, who has a family, who has property, who has two sons and two daughters. And then the elder son has phobia for reading, has phobia for knowledge. And that's how the choicest property, the younger brother connived with the, with the lawyer, the attorney to the fam family, and then had the choicest property. Just to recap, we started that last week by letting us know that the book of Hosea forces tells us that God's people are destroyed, are pained, are crippled. For lack of knowledge. Not because the devil is around. So the greatest threat to the believer. Is ignorance. Not the devil. Why? The Bible clearly tells us in the book of 1 John 3. Verse 8. That for this purpose the son of God was made manifest. That he might destroy the works of the devil. The question you ask yourself. Has Jesus been made manifest? The resounding answer is yes. Then has he destroyed his works? The works of the devil? The answer is also a big yes. That's why what is left with him now is wise. According to Ephesians 6 from verse 10. So he said that you might be able to withstand against in the evil day. The wise of the enemy. His trick, his deception, that's all he has. He has to lie over and over again. For example, Satan in the garden never had the power to make Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. He had to deceive them to make them eat. And how did he deceive them? It's the same pattern he uses. He told them they are not there yet. They have not become who they already are. So, naturally, they desire to want to become. Let's beware of schemes that want to make people rich now and now. That's the, the same deception of, of, of the enemy. Now, you see, how does it break homes? How does it break 
marriages. He tells one of the spouse, you see, you are not in that place of happiness that you are supposed to be. I can provide for you. And then the woman foolishly follows him or the man foolishly follows him. And the next thing is that they, that's when it will not dawn on them that they were in a happy state before. You see, until Adam and Eve became naked, they didn't realize that they have been in a protective state of the Almighty. Be filled with the knowledge of God. They know not, neither will they understand. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are gods, and every one of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Psalm 82 verse 5 and 6. Jesus said in John's Gospel 10 34, And if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, do you blaspheme because I said I am the Son of God? Be filled with the knowledge of God. I just quoted the scripture. Be filled with the knowledge of the will. Be filled with the knowledge of his will. Is being filled with God. John's Gospel 1 1 says, In the beginning was the word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Don't get it twisted. He used the Word was God because we are looking back now. Because at the point that Word changed form from being the invisible Word to becoming the physical Jesus. So that's why I said the word was with God. And the word was God. The word is still God now. Praise God. Hallelujah. It was an interlude. And it says all things were made by him. Begin to think of it. Being filled with the creator makes you a creator. Being filled with the creator gives you the ability to create. What he is saying, when, when the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit says expressly to the church, be filled with the knowledge of his will, he's saying become a small Elohim, a creator. God said, let us make. When you are filled with the knowledge of his will, you become and Elohim. You function in the capacity of Elohim to create. That's what Jesus was saying when he told them, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe, you receive, you receive them. Even if it didn't exist and you declared it in my name, say for your sake, I'll make it happen. Colossians 1 16 tells us that by him everything was created and in him all things consist and there was nothing made without him that was made. Listen, the Bible says in verse 9 and 10 that ye are complete in him. He is the head of all principalities and you are complete in him. Let me remind me again the reason why some Christians fall out of the faith. It's because they thought something was incomplete. Remind me again why a married woman would go and open her leg for a so-called man of God, a native doctor in clerical colors. It's because she, she thinks that God is going to bless her by contradicting his own word. i say that again. It is stupidity in its mm -hmm. altitude. God's word clearly kicks against adultery. Yet, somebody who occupies the office, who claims to be a man of God, asks you to come and let him anoint you, let him sleep with you, and then you get pregnant. And then you said, he's a prophet. That is the will of God. God does not contradict himself, please. That's why the Bible says, for he is not a man that he should lie. When you contradict yourself, you are a liar. Mm -hmm. He doesn't contradict himself. He does not contradict himself. 
With whom there is no variableness, nor shadow of turning. That's why he is an ever constant. That's why he's able to change everyone and everything. No shadow of turning. He's always on top at the peak. You don't see the shadow. Glory to Jesus this morning. Let's now continue. That ye might walk worthy. Let me just run through it, the verse 9 so that we we'll catch it again. Colossians 1 verse 9. For this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The word knowledge there we said last week is epignosis. The precise and the correct knowledge. Strive for nothing less than epignosis. Don't forget we also said that ignorance is a form of knowledge. Let's not go for it. Gnosis also is another form of knowledge. The Pharisees, they had gnosis. And they had problem. Jesus looked at them in Luke's Gospel 22-29. He said, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Now look at it. You cannot manifest the power of God without the knowledge of the scriptures. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For I will give a math and a wisdom that none of your adversaries shall be able to predict. A mount and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to predict. Scripture says, and we know that all things work together for our good. Do you know what this does to your, your self-esteem, your self-image, your self-what? It boosts it. It's a moral booster. You just get to a point that you understand. 2 Corinthians 2, 14-15. Thank God, thanks be to God, who causes us to triumph always in Christ Jesus and make it available. We are like fragrance before him. We are God's perfume on earth. That's 1 Corinthians 2, 14, 15. We have God's perfume on earth. You smell good. So why would somebody say somebody was covered with blanket when God calls you his perfume? Glory to Jesus. The difference how you conduct yourself is a reflection of the revelation knowledge you have. It's a reflection of the knowledge you have. Don't go for the wrong knowledge, please. Don't go for ignorance. Don't even go for gnosis. Go for epignosis. The precise and the correct knowledge. We are unraveling what epignosis means to us. We are unraveling what it means to be filled with the knowledge of God's word. Your body, your conduct, your intellect is as important as the food you eat. I'll say that again. Your intellect, your conduct, your IQ, your acumen, your EQ, e e emotional quotient, your SQ, your social quotient, is as important as the food you eat. Imagine a man who eats God, for example. God's word, you eat it. First Peter 1.23 tells us, that we are born again by the indestructible seed of God's word. The word seed there is the Greek word sperma. First Peter 123. Being born again, not of corruptible, perishable, but by the incorruptible seed of God's word. Now, so when you get there, when you are filled with the knowledge, the epignosis of his will, your indestructibility becomes apparent. I'll say that again. 
when you are filled with the knowledge of his will, the epignosis, your indestructibility becomes apparent. Your invincibility becomes apparent. Invincible. Somebody that cannot be defeated. Nobody says you have to lose some battles. God's word didn't promise you that. He promised you you will win every single time. The reason why we have different kind of strange happenings to Christians across the globe is simply this. It's a lack of epignosis. Where we get stick to what our pastors tell us and what your pastor is saying to you is wrong. At best, it is nonsense. For some of them, it is ignorance. People are merchandising ignorance. They even sell it. People pay for ignorance. Whereas epignosis is very free. They pay for ignorance. The man calls himself the servant of God. The woman calls herself a minister of the gospel. Goes and gets olive oil for two dollars. And comes and market it to you for a hundred and fifty dollars. That's a businessman. A pastor sold olive oil in England for a hundred and something thousand pounds. A bishop from Nigeria. When he came back, he was happy. He was made a hundred and something thousand pounds for one bottle of oil. And do you know why they are having market? They are not selling it to white. They are selling it to Nigerians there. You were in your country, Nigeria. They were pushing you. You didn't have peace. You have not gone to the most, the, one of the most developed countries in the world. They are still pushing you. Does it not tell you you are the one pushing yourself? You are not the problem. You are in Nigeria where Buhari can't give you light. They can't construct road for you. You cannot get the basic social amenities of life. If you go and buy out of frustration, hardship, poverty, oil from a higher lane, that's what Jesus calls them, for 10,000 naira, I will understand with you. I will bear with you. But that you have found your way out of Nigeria, mm -hmm. a collapsing economy. But my economy so us. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. When you are filled with the knowledge of God, one of the advantages is that your language change. Mm -hmm. Take note of that. I know the depth of your, your knowledge and the kind of knowledge you carry when you open your mouth to speak as a Christian. Any child of God filled with their pignosis does not talk negative, does not talk fear, does not talk down, does not talk failure. It can't come out from your mouth. It just can't come out. Because such vocabulary is no longer found in your spirit. Your spirit is constantly renewing your mind using the word of life. So just negative things can't come out. As I was saying about the one that was scammed, you now find your way to a place like England and you are still in problem that you needed to buy oil for over a hundred and something thousand pounds. Then you are the problem. Most of the things we call deliverance that we think require deliverance it's just simple epignosis. I call it simple because it's very powerful. The gospel is simple. That's why I call it simple. Calling it simple is not underrating it. The simplicity of the gospel. The Bible says it's foolishness to them that perish. When Christianity becomes complicated, become costful, 
become very costly to you. <laughs> you are not operating under a big gnosis because it's not costly. Jesus said clearly, freely ye have received, freely give. When it's now so costly to you, if the Christian faith is now so costly to your family, that every month it drains something from your pocket, you are not operating a big gnosis. You are operating something else. This series is meant to crack our eyes open. Be filled with the knowledge, a big, a, a big gnosis of his will, part two. After we heard of your faith in him, this is our desire that you be filled with epignosis unto all spiritual intel, understanding. Because it is that epignosis that will actually take you to what I call epiphino last week. It is your season. That's, that's exactly what it means. It's your season. Without epignosis, you don't assess epiphino. You don't assess your season. Jesus made that very clear. The scripture made that clear in the book of Luke. Very, very clear. About the birth of John the Baptist. He was in the desert place until the day of his showing forth to Israel. That was his epiphino. Verse 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord. Do you see that? Unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Did you see that? People are increasing in social media knowledge, not in the knowledge of God. And they are Christians. Christian families are increasing in the knowledge of worldly songs and worldly actors and actresses, not in the knowledge of God. So you see, God, like I started with last week, God hates ignorance. And God doesn't want you to be stagnant as far as knowledge is concerned. But we have fine-tuned the kind of knowledge. Because it's not all knowledge. Somebody says, nah, no, God wants us to be knowledgeable. Carry his book on Ekanka, carry his book on this, carry his all the demonic book. And at the end of the day, they get themselves more confused. God asks you to go for a pig gnosis, nothing else. The psalmist said, I am wiser than all my teachers because I follow your precept. When your Christian life is conducted by the book written by your church denomination, something is wrong. Something is wrong. These days, God's word takes the second place. Why the books our pastors write take the front burner in our lives? Something is wrong. The word of God takes second place. Why the so-called doctrine in the denomination takes the front burner? Something is wrong. Why will a preacher come out and be shouting in the morning that because you, because you are putting on trousers, you are not holy? That's an example of those marketing ignorance and stupidity altogether. And they will be shouting at the top of their voice. Another ignorant person look at them and say, Ha, ah, this man of God, they try. <laughs> so, be, be, be careful when people... Don't accept compliment until you have seen who is giving you the compliment. i say that again. Don't accept compliment until you see the complimenter. Who is complimenting you? Look at the woman who says that man, he they try preaching, they try. She does not know John 3 16, literally. She has never read the Bible on her own. So her commentary don't mean anything. Huh? That ye might walk worthy. So you see. You only walk worthy when you are filled with a big gnosis. I don't care who is preaching it. It doesn't matter whether it's deeper life. It doesn't matter whether it's Pastor Kumuyi. It doesn't matter whether it's Adeboye. It doesn't matter who. If it is not a big gnosis, run from it. Run away from it. It, it doesn't matter. Because 
the, the crisis the body of Christ is experiencing today is because of the, the believers not adhering to the precept of God's word. It says, be filled with epignosis, nothing else. As a Christian, fill yourself with epignosis. Be like the Berean Christians. At 1711, they went back to search the scriptures if what Apostle Paul taught them was so written in the scrolls. Do you know what it cost them? Because the scroll was not in one place, it was severally. That means if they even had their own copy, we had the scrolls, we had parchment. They had to go and search. But we have the complete 66 books at the tip of our finger. It's in our smartphones. But that's the only thing we never read. Go and carry our statistics and check. Find out how many Christians have Bible downloaded in their phone. Very rare. Very few. They have all music. All worldly music. They can sing it. They have all the movies. They can tell you the story from the beginning to the end. But they don't have life. I'm coming to that. They don't have life in their smartphone. The only thing they should have is what is not there. They don't have it. Scripture talks about in Deuteronomy. Talk of God's word every time as you go about in the street. Carry the word of God along. That was where the Bible talked about smartphone. Way back in Deuteronomy. Go and read it. He said, as you wake up, as you rise up, as you walk in the street, how do you do that? How do you carry it about? Smartphone, God get. Where you are. Anywhere is with you. As long as your phone is with you, it's with you. But how many of us? I'm preaching from a smartphone this morning. When you do not know the value of technology, don't forget. We had a sermon. It's in my YouTube channel. Apostle Blessing David Idagbo. Go check it out. Where you see that the same chip that the Antichrist used to oppress, to destroy. It is a better technology that will be used in the new heavens and the new earth, particularly New Jerusalem. Where you will have the mark of Christ on your forehead. It's a chip. It's a technological feature. That I can tell you for sure. It's a technological feature. That you have. And it will be used. So God is not against technology. As some denominations years back. Led their people astray. Kumu you did that. Thank God for knowledge. Thank God for grace. Thank God for God being a merciful God. Because if God was a businessman. He would have destroyed Pastor Kumuyi. He made the lives of Christians very miserable. He told them God was against technology. God hated technology. And yet you carry 4 billion cells in your brain. Are you seeing the involvement? But do you know still today, some of them still feel that they are superior to other denominations. Even when their obvious mistake has become exposed to everybody. My goodness, where is the place for humility? This is people don't even know how to define humility. You add, you misled the people, you lied, you are caught napping, and you people still feel superior. So where's the humility? I'm not against anybody this morning. I am declaring God's word the way it is. Be filled with the knowledge, the epignosis of his will. This morning, let it sink into your spirit that if it is not coming from the word of God, you are not obligated to even receive it. And not just any knowledge. It has to be a epignosis. It has to be the precise and the correct knowledge. Anything outside of that puts you in jeopardy. Put your journey to heaven in jeopardy. Put your journey to the new heaven and the new earth in jeopardy. And also put your assessing, your will, your inheritance in Christ Jesus on this side of heaven at risk. 
Glory to Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. So you only walk worthy when you have epignosis. Sometimes I feel pity when I hear ministers preach. I just feel ashamed. I feel sorry for them. You are in your house early morning. Somebody comes and is spewing that nonsense. Ignorance. So you think trust is God's problem for a woman? Jesus came to die for skirt and blouse. He came to die for trousers. How stupid can one be? So echo is not anointing. Sweating doesn't mean you are doing the right thing. That you are shouting doesn't mean you are, you are saying the right thing. How can a man be carrying the Bible where the truth is written and is preaching error? Oh, let me, let me repeat that again. It's a very pathetic picture. How can you carry the Bible with the clear truth written in it and you are preaching error? Do you know what that tells me? That evangelist has not read the Bible. If he has read the Bible, he will not come and be talking that God is angry with, with the trousers. Really? In which Bible? Is this woman your wife? Is she your wife? It shows that the common basic knowledge, I think I am fired up and I'm pissed off this morning. The, the simple basic knowledge of the fact that the woman is under her husband. Not even the pastor can control a married woman. She's under her husband's authority. And she, the final authority to that woman is her husband. <laughs> And you that is also a married man is coming to quarrel with another married woman saying that she's putting on trouser. Oh God, go home and sit down. Stop preaching. You are making noise. You are disturbing us. You should be ashamed of yourself that you are preaching the Bible, preaching something wrong, and the answer is right in your hand. You carry it about every morning. How pathetic is that? And how offensive? Sunday morning like this across the globe, a, a preacher stands on the pulpit, opens the Bible, where the truth, the epignosis is, and is preaching error. Why? Because 2 Timothy 2.15, 1 Timothy 2.15, the Bible cautions, study to show yourself approved. No, they won't study, they want to be approved. Don't you say you can't beat God? Listen, when you are filled with the knowledge of God, you don't become an embarrassment when you open your mouth to preach. Because when you preach, have it in mind that you are not the only one who has, who has the copy of the Bible and that not everybody is like you. Some are actually studying. How will I acquaint myself with such people? The Bible says in the book of Luke 4, when Jesus spoke, also in the book of Matthew, Matthew 2, 12 downwards, the Bible said Jesus spoke as one with power, with authority, and not like the Pharisees. You remember Luke 4? Luke 4, 17, down when he went to the temple, and, and the scroll was delivered unto him. And the Bible said when he opened to the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. If he had not read it before, he wouldn't have known that place to open Huh? That was God. He became flesh. He took time to study. You are making noise and disturbing people's ears and, and selling ignorance. I would. Do you know that these preachers, these lazy preachers who will not study the Bible are even constituting more problems to people coming? They confuse even Christians and confuse unbelievers that would have come. One here, one said, there's nothing wrong with it because the scripture didn't say anything is wrong with it. And he shows you. This other guy, this other ignoramus will not show you any scripture. But he just keep making noise. He just keep making noise. My goodness. Jesus died for hearing and died for Yvonne, died for hair. When the Bible simply said that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, do we enter heaven with this body? 
So what is the problem with, with your hair, with your wivon, with your, with your clothes? What nonsense. When you are filled with the knowledge of God, the knowledge of his will, it saves you from being an embarrassment. It prevents you from becoming an embarrassment. When you are filled with epignosis, you cannot be deceived. It doesn't matter how emotional the preacher is. They can't deceive you. Didn't Jesus say, my sheep hear my voice? How do you hear his voice? From the word of God. Not from the sermon of a preacher. Except the preacher is preaching his word. John's Gospel 10. My sheep hear my voice and they obey me. So those who will not obey, who will listen to higher lane, they are not his sheep. My sheep hear my voice and obey me. This morning the church needs to wake up. It is so unfortunate that those who call themselves ministers of the gospel are more of a problem to the kingdom of God, the growth in the kingdom of God, than even the devil can ever be. Why? Because when these ones are talking, everybody listen. But if a native doctor is preaching, say, hey, come on, they go. You've already dismissed him as a liar because you know he's a native doctor. But because one comes in the name of the Lord, it's not everyone who comes in the name of the Lord that is correct. Many are in error. Do you remember the case of the old prophet in the Old Testament who had lost it and suddenly used the new prophet and that one lost his life? Don't lose your life for a, a servant of God, one who calls himself a minister who has fallen out already. How can you carry the answer with you and you are giving the wrong answer? How? How pathetic is that? What you have been preaching three, four years ago is the same error. You have not taken that time to go and read the Bible. And you never quote scripture. So you have become an authority, just like Jesus. Abi? Nonsense and ingredients. Verse 11. Strengthened with all might. You see that? According to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. You see that? The revelation of Jesus, the epignosis of God, keeps you together in good times and bad times. That's what it means when he's talking about patience and all long suffering with joyfulness. Good times and bad times, the epignosis of God's word keeps you intact. Some of us, when little pressure is applied, all the negative things begin to come out because out of the abundance of the heart, the man speak. You better wipe your, your library and get fresh books there. I tell people when I speak, people like, wow, you must be reading so much. I say, of course, I finish 66 books once in every two months and I repeat it six times a year. 66 books. 66 books once in every two months. That is 66 times 6. Those are the number of books I read. It's called Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, up to Revelation. They are books, people. They are not portions. They are books. Actual books. I read 66 times 6 every year. So I am a scholar, I'm a reader. So that's why there is nobody who can come to me and said in the, and say something in the name of the Lord. You will be exposed immediately and stopped. And God didn't give that instruction to, to pastors only. Funny enough, is it not ministers that don't read? Is it not ministers that don't read? You'll be talking to another man's wife and you are giving her instruction. You are condemning another man's wife. That first Corinthians level clearly says you don't have such authority. And you are sweating in ignorance, sweating in stupidity. 
come on. It's, it's, a, it's irritating. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partaker. Partakers of the inheritance of the sin. Did you see that? He didn't say that we make us. Mm -mm. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us. is in the past tense. So the revelation, knowledge of Jesus, epignosis shows you your inheritance. That's another point. I've been giving all the points scatteredly. The knowledge of his will shows you your inheritance. Not what you will inherit, what you have now as we speak. It shows you. Who hath delivered us, look at it, from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Remember the other time when we were ministering, we gave the analogy of, 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 of transposition. Who had given us, who had trans delivered us from the kingdom, from the power of darkness. You see that? From the ability, the influence of darkness. We have been translated, transposed into the kingdom of his dear son. And somebody looks at you and says, you need to be coming for deliverance every day. My God. Sometimes I ask myself, how do we cure this? They know not. Truly, neither would they understand. The ones I feel pity for are the congregations, the people. Because if the people were like the Berean Christians in Acts 17, these pastors would have been forced to start opening their Bibles or just confess that they are not called. They have no business being behind the pulpit. But unfortunately, we don't have the Berean Christians. In this generation, we don't have the Berean Christians. What we have are the right on pastor Christians. Yes, pastor. Glory, Pastor. Hallelujah, Pastor. Nobody goes to check to find out if what Pastor has said is so. Imagine the Berea Christians going to audit Paul. Yeah, because they understand that Paul is not the authority. God is. You get the point. They understood. They understand. That Paul is not the final authority. And that's why Paul himself said it in Ephesians 5. Follow me even as I follow Christ. These days when your pastor is the final authority. That's why you, you are in a mess. That's why you are in a mess. Check the scripture. As newborn babes, he said, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. We are not growing. If it's not a pignosis, you are not growing spiritually. The dangerous thing about spirituality and spiritual growth is that if you don't feed on a pignosis, you didn't grow. You can be in one spot the same way you are for 20 years. Physically, everybody will know you will emaciate and you will die. But spiritually, your death will not be apparent to people when most of them also are very carnal. It takes a spiritual person to know. One sign to know a backslider is let them talk. One way to know the status, the spiritual status of a believer is let them open their mouth and talk. Just anything, any discussion, you will find out that your words are the thermometer. That I used to read your level spiritually. Just engage them in any talk. Two minutes, three minutes talk. You have known their debt spiritually. And, uh, I don't know of you, but that's how I determine people. And it has never failed. There are things that can come out from my mouth. I'm not pretending it's not there, it's being erased completely. Glory to Jesus. Fear, 
Where is he coming from? Talk, talk of failure. Where is he coming from? Talk of negativity. Where is he coming from? It's not in me. Such as I have given unto you. I don't have it. I won't give it. I'm not pretending. You can have it. Praise God. You won't receive it from me because I don't have it. Scripture says, such as I have, I give. I don't have that, I won't give. I don't have that, I won't give you. I don't have fear, I won't give you. I don't have failure, I won't give you. I don't have poverty, I won't give you. I don't have foolishness, I won't give you. Glory to Jesus this morning. Why? Because I have replaced them with their epignosis. The precise and correct knowledge of Jesus. These days when we have mistake. We have mistaken being steward for being the master when it is our picture that is in every signboard now. Huh? You were called a caretaker, you have overtaken the property. Mm. We used to be caretaker, but some of us are owners right now. They are owners. I watched a video clip. Where as the pastor was highlighting from his car, and the car is not even a good one, in one of these African countries. Terrible things happen in Africa. No wonder they are called monkeys. And some of them really have monkey brains. Even monkeys are smarter than them. Sorry I'm harsh this morning. As the man highlighted from his vehicle, anywhere the church member were, they all just laid down. Put their heads on the floor. No one moved. It doesn't matter where you were. As long as they sight him. They all stood where they were. Bowed down. Until he walked from the road. Entered and passed them. Nobody moved. They all bowed down. He has forgotten his caretaker. He's not the owner of the house. Those are the people that locked Jesus outside. In Revelation 3, the Laodicean church, where he's knocking. 3 verse 20 in the book of Revelation. Can anyone hear my voice? No, they can't hear his voice anymore because they have mistaken Jesus for another person. The man is not the owner. He's no longer caretaker. He's not the owner. He has taken over the property. And you wonder, people, these guys have followers. You are inexcusable. You have the word. God has told you, study to show yourself a proof. You refuse to do that. So who are you obeying? What are you doing? You wrote one stupid book in the church and call it the church manual. That's what you are following? Your denomination's manual? Let your denomination's manual give you eternal life. To some of us, eh, it will be too late. Too. By the time the reality hits us, if you recall what God said in the book of Hosea 4, he said you have rejected knowledge. And because you reject knowledge, I've also rejected you. When people like us are telling them the truth, they dismiss you. They say you are no, no. So you are the only one correct. Who is talking about who is right or who is wrong? I'm showing you God's word. It's not a contest of who is right or who is wrong. There is no even reason, no room for any person being right or wrong. This is what his word says. Period. It's not negotiable. Except you are not born again. Glory to Jesus. Is it the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that dwells in you? And then you are arguing God's word? That something is definitely wrong. You have a wrong spirit then. So when you are filled with the knowledge of God's word, you do not argue God's word. Once divine instruction comes from God's word, he enters you. Let nobody deceive you in the name of a prophetic ministry. A prophetic operation. God does not contradict himself. No operations from the spirit will conflict the scripture. Any instruction you are given to by a prophet, by an apostle, by anybody that conflict the scripture, disregard it. But how will a man know if he contradicts the scripture when he has never read it? Now that is the, that's the bane of church members. That's the reason why these charlatans, these native doctors in clerical colors are having flourishing ministries. Who will challenge them? The woman has not read it. Her husband has not read it. So the man came and said, this is what God impressed in my heart now. I need to sleep with your wife for your family to be blessed. One came on air 
I said, no, that all the women he has slept with, a pastor, president and founder, I said, no, all the women he has slept with, he obtained the consent of their husband. So he told their husband, their husband asked him to sleep with them first before he slept with them. They are looking for fruit of the womb. Yeah, it is that. It's like, it's like, it's like a comedy, right? No, it's real. I listened to the man. I listened to him when he was interviewed by police. Impregnated the wife's younger sister that came to live with them. Has impregnated several married women and singles in the church. It was so bad, it was a wife that went to report to police. Because even at a point, she couldn't see how this would be scripture. How this would be from God. But what? A very terrible damage has been done already. How did she figure it out? She used common sense instead of using the Bible sense. When a believer is not responding to you with common sense, I know he's on a spiritual level. No level. That's your level. When we are using common sense, I, to, I told you, I said, if you want to know a believer's status, don't, as you talk naturally, don't even raise any spiritual topic. Just natural talk. Five minutes, you, you, you should be able to know the person's level. If they have level or no level. Their level, some people's level are no level. It's zero. Be filled with the knowledge, epignosis of his will. And see your life transform. These guys are bringing reproach to the name of God. Why? Because they neither read, their members will not read too. I didn't hear where Jesus told you that your pastor is a final authority. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Some founders have become the way, the truth, and the life of because it is only Jesus that I will not query. It's only Jesus that I will not go and look for another book to try and see if Jesus lied to me. So when you are treating your pastor like that, listen, for those of us who think we are smart. If you are not treating your pastor like Jesus Christ, the truth, the way, and the life, then you know you are in serious problem. Because even Paul, the apostle who wrote to Todd, who the Holy Ghost used to write to Todd of the Bible, said, don't follow me, oh, follow Christ, oh. You must know how to follow Christ. So in case if I delay, you shouldn't follow me. That's the reason why he rebuked Peter. If Paul wasn't following, if Paul wasn't studying the scroll and the parchment, he would not have known that Peter had. And then he would not have corrected Peter. This day you mentioned certain big names. And the people are like, ah, why is he calling their name? No, he shouldn't call their name. Paul rebuked Peter. Paul was a new entrant. Peter is an old or John Way, an old man, an established guy in the faith. Paul withstood him and Peter instantly because he was a man of the spirit. You see, when you rebuke, when you correct a spiritual person, they don't, they are not offended, they don't react. Did you see how Peter, because many times we only look at the rebuke from Paul and we don't focus on the response of Peter. Peter didn't utter one word. Because the moment Paul was speaking, his spirit picked it that he was saying the truth. That was a big gnosis coming. Peter didn't say one word. He walked away. Mention one popular pastor's name and try to correct him. His members will curse you right there. The, their level is no level. Go and read it. Paul apparently embarrassed Peter. But that was not his goal. His goal was to defend. He said, I am set for the defense of the gospel. So this morning, I don't care about names. I don't care about your church name, your denomination. No. If you err, you have constituted yourself as an impediment to people coming to the kingdom. That kingdom where I belong. That kingdom where he has so entrusted me and made me a minister in his vineyard. I won't let you spoil my work. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because my work is to allow him to walk through me. Don't become an, an obstacle. Jesus, look at the Pharisees. He said, you, you are not entering. You are preventing people from entering. You are not there. You are preventing. Just imagine you are crying every morning and harassing married men's wife. You are harassing married, married men's wife. It's just you don't even know the first thing in the Bible. Are they your wives? Or you don't know your wife? Is your wife not at home? 
If you have common Bible sense, you know that you will not be speaking to a married woman like that because you are even breaking scriptures. Or is it the common sense that women use? And no, for what? No, I bet there's nothing wrong. Eh? When you not give me money, then you go, come, one come sleep with me. Ah, uh, wants to make love with me. No, that's not going to happen. And the scripture expressly said, defraud not one another, except it be for prayers. So that your faith be not hindered. Guess what? It's common sense they used to settle that matter now. It is do me, I do you. But the scripture says you have no reason. The only time you shouldn't have conjugal experience with your husband is when both of you, please get this very well. First Corinthians 7. It's when both of you decide to pray. It is as bad as that, that if one of them decide to be using spiritual fasting, to negate their conjugal relationship, the other one will tap you and say, that fasting don't end already. Let's go to bed. And scripture approves it. He said the only time, he said with consent. That means two of you has agreed to. Not you are forming like a mystery to your spouse. For what? You will enter the bedroom, but we do it wherever we are right now. There's no time. How many times have even Christian marriage counselors used this to counsel the man? To rebuke the man? Uh -huh. When you are not performing your role and you now want her to give her your body. Is he right? You are using common sense for the Bible? There's no place for common sense in the Bible. We use Bible sense. We only have one, one type of Bible sense. It's called, it's called faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Don't you see that our life is tied to the word? God's word is like water to the fish. Remove him from the water, he's done. That's what's happening to many of us now. That's why it says, get back your life. If you are in the right environment, you produce the right results. Your environment for production is not Benin. It's not Kansas. It's not Texas. It's not California. It's not Khartoum. mm, -mm, -mm, -mm. Your right environment is the scripture, the epignosis. When you find yourself in the realm of epignosis, you will keep producing. There is no season when you are in epignosis. There's no season. When you say season, it means there is a time that thing will not be. No, when you are in epignosis, there's no season. Jesus was as powerful as he was when he was awake as when he was asleep. Uh huh. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. There's no season. There's no season. Awesome God. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created. Look at it. I've quoted this before, right? That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Listen carefully. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Can you see? That's why it is pathetic when somebody is afraid of witches and wizard oppression. And that becomes a preoccupation of a denomination. You are chatting every day witches and wizards. Where the Bible says principalities and powers, they were made of him. They made him. He made them. Hmm? All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things, that is prototokos in the Greek, you know, as against monogene, John's Gospel 3.16. That in all things he might have the preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in him should all things dwell. I'm going to stop here this week. Next week, we'll pick up with the part three. In that part three, I'm going to lay emphasis that being filled with the knowledge of his will, the word and the spirit are one and the same. That's where we're going to take off from next week. I don't want to rush us and I don't want us to suffer from overfeeding. Yeah, spiritually. So we'll be dipping it one after the other. Being filled with the knowledge of his will that's all every believer should strive for. 
The rest is history. It's like when you put your ATM card in the ATM machine, having code everything that is required, you sit back and relax and let the money roll out. If there's money in the ATM machine. But trust me, in God's principle, the resources are always available. Mm -hmm. Glory to Jesus. Did you hear that? In God's, in God's ATM machine, there's always money. The resources are never scarce. They don't go on strike. So why are we not enjoying the fullness of the kingdom? That's the cure we are, we are providing. Because the disease, the name of the disease is called ignorance. Mm -hmm. The cure is epignosis. So let us make it a point of duty. You can't substitute the word of God with prayers. It is stupidity. You cannot substitute God's word with prayers. How do you even know what to pray when you don't have the word? How? Does it not amaze you that the disciples have been praying for years and they came to Jesus and they said, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, when Jesus opened his mouth, what he said was completely different from any prayer they have ever had before. Oh. That's why these days I am bothered for those who call themselves prayer warriors. They are nothing but prayer murmurers. They are religious murmurers. You see why I say I won't put it? I've been talking for one hour already. So, we have to stop here. Next week, we'll continue. Be filled with the knowledge, epignosis of his will. We'll be looking at part three next week. We're going to take it poco a poco until this thing gets into our very core. Don't forget, your spiritual status is revealed by your language. You can't fake it. You can't fake it for more than 30 seconds. It will definitely show up. That the person is called a pastor doesn't mean they have revelation knowledge. Also hear them speak. But how can you judge? How can you discern when you do not have the knowledge of God's word? Let's rise up on our feet this morning. Be filled with the knowledge of his will, part two. <laughs>